led us to act in a beneficial manner. There may be times when we don't necessarily want to act in a beneficial manner. We may know the right thing to do, but just don't want to do it. It's in these moments we can focus on our intention. May. Dash. Me we aren't ready to do the difficult thing, to quit a certain behavior. To set a boundary, or forgive someone for whom we hold a resentment. But we can set the intention to do so, and investigate our willingness in. Meditation by repeating statements like, May I have the willingness to forgive. May I have the willingness to quit smoking or skip that piece of cake or stay off the internet tonight, etc. Ellipsis dot. May I have the willing dash ness to make amends to my partner. The first choice we can make in wise intention is that of generosity. Dot. Generosity teaches us how to let go of our self-centeredness. To let go of clinging to ideas of mine and me. Selfishness, or self-centeredness, is one of the ways we justify and cling to our addictive behaviors. Generosity comes from the awareness that we're holding on too tightly to our selfishness. The karmic result of looking at the world only through the lens of me and mine and what I want leads to loneliness, sipa, dash, ration, and dissatisfaction. Letting go of this clinging can be the solution. Letting go of me and mine does not mean you need to stop acnol dash edging your social identities within your community without generosity the mind is confined to a small tight space anything that's not about me and mine is off limits at times in our lives when we become dependent our world becomes focused on sad dash is spying our cravings on holding on to what we want right now we get sucked into the reactivity of survival mode believing that we must have our addictive substance or behavior to survive our needs for relief or pleasure consume us and we become blind to the needs of those around us we may even begin to see them as threats we can break out of this cycle by opening our hearts by being present for and in service to other people generosity allows space to re dash spawn to those around us to include their well-being in our choices this can of course be a tricky concept for those of us who struggle with issues of codependency. Generosity does not mean giving of ourselves without boundaries until we are depleted. It does not mean using helping as a form of manipulation to get what we want. Again, what's important here is that we're honest about the intention behind our actions we try not to confuse intent with impact our intention may be to not harm but sometimes the impact is that someone feels hurt many of us have experienced this in our addictions without intending to and often without even being aware of it we've created harm in other people's lives. The way we choose to practice compassion in recovery is by being accountable when our actions hurt someone, and by acknowl. Dash. Edging this hurt without blame or shame, defensiveness or justification. 
This includes when we offend someone by inadvertently using unwise speech or actions in regards to their social identity, such as race or gender. In these moments, it is important to recognize the difference between intent and impact, and having a deep appreciation and compassion for the interconnectedness among us all. Generosity allows us to cultivate appreciative joy, which is first of the four heart practices of Buddhism, along with compassion, love, dash, in kindness, and equanimity. Joyful appreciation is simply being half dash py when somebody else has good fortune, happiness, and peacefulness. Generosity lets us appreciate the happiness of others rather than having feelings of envy, jealousy, or wanting them to be just a bit less happy so we seem a little happier by comparison. We want the other person's half dash finesse to increase, for them to become more at peace, and so we learn to appreciate those things in their lives. In the moment of giving, of Jenner, dash, Ozati, we've let go of self-centered desire and grasping what is, mine, or what brings me pleasure. We're giving up any ill will or aversion we feel toward the person and toward the world. Instead of creating separation and withdrawal, we're actively fostering appreciation for the closeness and connectedness of the world. This is a joy that's not obstructed by selfish desires, envy, or re dash sentiment. It's the purity of happiness for someone else's good fortune. We can choose to cultivate this feeling of joy in the happiness and success of others, without the need to compete or compare. It's actually a feeling that's natural to humans, but it's often neglected when our attention is focused on selfish craving. This is the true seed of generosity, delighting in the happiness of others, without needing anything in return. The second heart practice is compassion, which is first of all a will, dash, ingness to come close to pain, to recognize it, honor it, acknowledge it, and respond to it wisely. This isn't easy, because just as we want to run, from or suppress our own pain, we also want to avoid being with the pain of others. Compassion means sitting with our own pain and that of others. It stops the cruelty of indifference. Compassion for ourselves is crucial. Self-compassion is the key to healing the shame and guilt that we often feel as we begin to recognize the harms we caused through our addictions. You may also find that compassion is difficult to realize when it comes to those who have caused you great harm. In these cases, it can be helpful to focus on your own healing by practicing self-compassion. Engaging in wise reflection of the Four Noble Truths, and committing to the practices of the path. With time, you may gradually wish for the relief of suffering for those who have hurt you. Compassion is not just offering sympathy and a helping hand. It's also an intention to avoid causing harm to others and ourselves. This is where we can most easily see the difference between skillful and un dash skillful actions and between wise and unwise intentions cruelty and all the harm it creates in the world comes from a lack of compassion 
Cruelty is a desire to cause pain. Compassion is caring about the welfare and happiness of others. Compassion rests on the renunciation of harm. Dash. In living beings and is not only the wish, but also the intention to put an end to their suffering. We need to open our hearts, not just our minds, to all the suffering that is experienced in the world. Compassion is not only a feeling, it is an action. The third heart practice is loving kindness, also known as meta. Dot. These are thoughts that are free from ill will, simply wishing that some dash body else be happy, that they be well, and free from suffering. It's the choice to consider the well-being of everyone in how we interact with the world. Meta isn't conditional. It isn't something we offer only to people we like. We can have concern and care even when we're feeling our own pain. We can bring meta to mind when we're faced with difficulty or torn by conflicting feelings about the conditions of life at the moment. Meta doesn't depend on people acting in a certain way, on our feeling a certain way in the moment, or on the result of our caring. It frees us from only caring about the well-being of others when we think it will lead to some outcome. With Meta, we don't ask the question, will it do any good to care about this person's well-being? This means that how we think about another person isn't based on their behavior, or even on the other person at all. How we think about a person is up to us, and if it's shaped by the practice of Metta, then we can care about every person's well-being, even the most difficult and unpleasant people we know. We can honestly hope that everyone finds a way to be happy without causing harm, wishing this goodwill towards Others frees us from the reactivity and anger that can come when we focus on the person's behavior or what we think they ought to do. We can begin to see the suffering and pain that somebody experiences as a result of their actions and care about that pain even if it might also lead to pain for us or for others. Our wish is that all beings are free from pain and suffering, that they escape hatred and fear, that they are at ease, and that they find happiness, generosity, compassion, and loving kindness make forgiveness not only possible, but also essential for recovery. Forgiveness rests on understanding and caring about the pain and confusion that give rise to actions that we experience as harmful we forgive when we focus on the person rather than the action we forgive only in the present when our hurt and anger make us aware that our resentment is blocking our own compassionate and generous responses Forgiveness is not so much something we are giving to the person who hurt us, but something we give to ourselves. It's centered more on our own conscious intention in how we choose to respond to them. Just as we sometimes act out of fear, greed, or confusion, we see that others do too. Forgiveness doesn't mean we accept or tolerate harm. It comes from understanding and accepting that the person causing us harm is doing so from a place of pain and con. Dash. Fusion. We extend compassion and goodwill to that person, even as we actively try to end the harm. 
This may mean creating safe boundaries or removing ourselves from exposure to harm. But we do this from a place of compassion and understanding, not resentment. It is essential that we extend the healing of forgiveness and calm ass into ourselves. Forgiveness allows us to let go of the guilt and shame of our own harmful actions. We remember that compassion is an action. So when we forgive ourselves we also set an intention not to recreate or continue the harm we have caused to others and to ourselves. Making amends is an important part of forgiveness. As we begin to gain clarity about the harm we caused in our addiction, we commit to make amends for that harmful behavior. We don't make amends for the sake of satisfying some external standard of morality, to be forgiven, or to get something in return. Instead, we use the process as a way to let go of our expectations and disappointments in others and ourselves, in other words, to let go of our attachment to a different past. One of the central principles of karma is realizing that I alone am responsible for the way my past actions impact my current responses to the world. We change our habits by letting go of the past and restoring balance in our relationships. Things we did in the past create patterns of behavior that continue to shape our thoughts and intentions in the present. That process doesn't stop until we change our relationship with those patterns and toward the people we've harmed. Amends are about Restoring the balance in our relationships, not about asking for forgive. Dash. Ness from others. In a sense, it is an action we take to forgive ourselves. When we have come to understand and face the reality of our impact on others, we begin to understand the purpose of making amends. Practicing compassion leads to a desire to relieve the suffering of people we've harmed, and a commitment to not cause further suffer. Dash. Ing. Even if the person isn't a part of our lives any longer, it's possible to acknowledge their hurt and to offer them our goodwill and our remorse. Making amends means we do what we can to remedy the harm or wrong. If that is not possible, we resolve to do some good, not as compensation, but to develop our habits in a different direction. When we intention, dash, ally take responsibility for our actions, we let go of harmful avoidance and self-judgment and develop a sense of connectedness, peace, and ease. Amends begin with a willingness to forgive ourselves and take the path of reconciliation, not only with those we have harmed, but also with our own hearts and minds. Generosity, compassion, loving-kindness, and forgiveness allow as to experience equanimity as we face pain and discomfort, both in ourselves and others. The fourth heart practice is equanimity. Dot. During our addictions, we often responded to situations that caused us anger, fear, or resentment with a craving that the situations be different. We gave up and surrender to the negative experience of life. Equanimity does not mean giving up. It is more a quality of leaning in. It is finding peace exactly where we are, regardless of external circumstances. Equanimity 
allows us to be right in the middle of things, to understand and accept things as they are without needing to escape. When we gave up, we said, I don't care what happens. Equanimity, on the other hand, is being able to say, I can be present for this. It's the acceptance that while there are some things we cannot change, we still have power over how we respond to them. While we don't always have control over our thoughts and feel dash things, we do have power over how we feed them. Inquiry of wise intention, colon. What compassion or forgiveness can you offer when someone's in dash? Tension is good but their impact is harm harmful, if it doesn't feel safe or appropriate to offer Offer this directly to the person, how can Can you bring that forgiveness into your own heart so you don't have the burden of carrying it during your periods of addictive behavior how did you act in ways that were clinging uncaring harsh cruel or unforgiving to dash ward whom including yourself were these feelings directed how might generosity compassion loving kindness and forgiveness have changed your behavior what actions have you taken that have harmed others have you formed an intention to reconcile with both yourself and the person or people you've harmed to make amends if so have you found a wise friend or mentor you can go to for guidance and support in the amends process which is summarized below what support can this person provide as you begin the process of amends making amends have you done something intentionally that you now recognize caused harm to another who has been harmed by your actions have you honestly formed the intention not to repeat harmful ac dash tie-ons and to learn from the experience in future interactions have you begun the process of directly addressing the harmful actions of your past making amends depends on the circumstance including your pres dash end relationship to the person and the extent to which you can undo the harm caused through direct actions, like correcting a public dis. Dash. Honesty or compensating another for things you have taken that were not freely offered. Ask yourself, what can I do in the present? Can you address and reconcile with the harm you have caused with? Dash. Out forming an attachment to being forgiven. Identify the motive a dash t on for making each amends. What actions would restore balance in your own feelings in AP? Dash. Approach to whatever harm you have caused. Can these steps be taken without causing new harm to the person or the relationship? If you're experiencing a difficult situation or choice in your life right now, investigate the intention you are bringing to this situation. 1. Are you being selfish or self-seeking? How? 2. Are you being driven by aversion, running away from an unpleasant experience or craving, grasping for pleasure? How? 3. How could you bring in a spirit of generosity, compassion, loving K. Dash. Inness, appreciative joy, and forgiveness to this situation. 4. 
How would this situation look different if you brought these factors to mind before reacting or responding? 5. If you don't want to, can you at least have the intention and willing dash ness to do so? Wise speech. Wise speech is based on the intention to do no harm. We've all used speech in a manner that may create harm, lying to keep others from knowing what's really going on, gossiping with the intention of putting someone down or satisfying our desire to be recognized, stealing time and attention by chattering on and on, or trying to convince others to meet our own needs at the expense of their own. Wise speech includes all the ways we use our voices, including online and in writing. The basic foundation of wise speech is honesty or truthfulness. Dishonesty is exaggeration, minimizing, omitting or lying with the in. Dash tension of presenting a distortion of reality. It can take the form of white lies to avoid embarrassment or exposure, half-truths to keep from being caught, or seemingly harmless things said at the expense of others. We may say more than we really know to be true in the hopes of appearing smarter or more confident in our position or feeling sometimes we say something before we know the truth dishonesty has to do with our intention in speech are we modi dash baited by greed fear or confusion or are we motivated by a sincere desire to express what's true what's useful what's kind and what's timely wise speech means we speak with the intention of not causing harm and of fostering safety and security in our community in active addiction we develop the habit of dishonesty we lie to cover up or mislead others about the nature and extent of our using or behavior we lie so we can satisfy the craving our fixation feeds by hiding our actions our feelings or the amount of money and effort we put into satisfying our craving many of us lie just for the sake of lying because the truth represents a reality we can't tolerate we get trapped by our secrets and for many of us having a double life becomes an addiction all its own this is why honesty is foundational to recovery dishonesty is one of the habits that allow our addictive behaviors to flourish as a result recovery needs to start with an honest appraisal of exactly what lies we told in what dishonesty we spread during our addictive behavior. The Buddha provided some guidelines for wise speech, in ad. Dash. Dish into truthfulness. He said to avoid slander and gossip, recognizing that such unwise speech causes conflict and makes the community less safe. So, when we talk about others, we can ask ourselves, what's our intention? Is it to cause division or exclusion? Is it to cause shame or am? Dash. Barrassment in someone else, or to somehow make ourselves look better at somebody else's expense? It's possible to talk about other people with the intention of kindness, generosity, and compassion, to seek under dash standing or support for another gossip and slander do not contribute to this and instead cause harm similarly idle chatter and saying things just 
to be heard or recognized, or to take up time when we're uncomfortable, can lead people to dismiss or ignore us and may create impatience and intolerance in our community. Wise speech is also reflected in the tone we use when we talk. If we express ourselves in harsh, angry, or abusive ways, we may not be hurt even if we're being truthful. Speaking gently, with the intention of kindness, fosters a community of friendliness and safety. There are always exceptions, of course, and wise speech also includes 